Welcome back to the Why So Serious. This is your host, Brandon. And today we have Ray Shiny from the single simulcast on today. And we are back to do another movie review of Ocean's 8 today. Uh, those of you who follow me from the beginning when it was just my blog, you know that I started doing movie reviews and TV reviews and I kind of got away from it. So I reached out to some people in the podcast group to find someone and was lucky enough to get this guy to come on. So uh, why don't you talk about your show? Yo, my name is Rashani. Um, I have a couple shows. I do single simulcast, which is uh, used to be your uh, favorite podcast, favorite podcast. Um, but then, you know, we evolved out. Um <laughs> I also have a show called The Dream Team and a show called Storytellers. Um, they're all available on iTunes, Stitcher, and on Libsyn. Cool, cool. Yeah, definitely check it out. I know you got you had on um, you had on Phenom a few weeks ago, and then you had on the uh, Black Guy with Tips, Rod and Karen. A couple yeah, last we couple all go weeks. back like four flats on a Cadillac. Yeah, so you've been running through some people recently. So yeah, definitely is a great show. I listen to it all the time. So definitely check it out. Um, it's one of the best podcasts and one of the people that kind of got me into it. So I've been listening to you for a while, Rod and Karen, uh, Chris and Phenom, all of them guys. I used to just start writing blogs and I never thought I'd do a podcast, but listening to you guys when we want to start it. So it's been pretty good so far. Yeah. But uh, today we are here to review Ocean's 8. Uh, Debbie Ocean gathers an all-female crew to attempt an impossible heist at New York City's yearly Met Gala. Uh, what do you think about this film? You know what? I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm a unabashed fan of the Ocean Trilogy Quartet now. Um, so uh, when I say that I have it third on the list, that's not low praise at all. Um, I thought that it was I thought it was really well done. There were like two or three things that I would have liked to have seen differently, but overall, it was the same fun romp that you were looking for, um, and I think that it was a good way to restart this uh, franchise uh, for a fresh new audience. Yeah, absolutely. I believe the same thing. Um, it was really well done. It was a breeze. It, it was under two hours. Uh, let me see how many minutes exactly was it. 110 minutes. So, yeah, under two hours. It didn't feel long at all in the movie theater. It's one of those films where you can go out with your wife or – of friends or just go hang out on a Friday. You want to see a movie that doesn't take a whole lot of thinking, but it's enjoyable, quick, uh, easy to watch, but also some really good acting. And uh, it followed the, I think it followed the Oceans kind of framework perfectly. Like if you've seen the Oceans film, this one fits right in with Oceans 11 and 12 and 13. It's got the same premise and style. And they even had the quirky cuts and transitions in the film that you remember from the other films. I just thought, it jumped right in. And honestly, for me, it made more sense. I mean, not made more sense, but it made a lot of sense because, uh, I mean, uh, by the way, this podcast is going to have some spoilers in it just for you guys to know. But um, there's a there's parts in the film, like in the beginning of the film, where they're looking through different random people. And, so, and she's like, oh, we got this guy. And then Sandra Bullock's character, Debbie Ocean, is like, uh, no, I don't need a guy. And she's like, what's wrong with a guy? And he's like, look. Most of the time, nobody pays attention to us women, so at least let's take advantage of that this time. And I was like, that makes perfect sense. So mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that part of the film and how they uh, incorporated the heist films but did it with a woman's touch. It, it was it was interesting to me how um, they made sure that you knew that this was uh, for the ladies, <laughs> to, to sound like one of those. Matter of fact, I didn't even say that right. I'm sorry. Let me say it like the R&B singers just said in the <laughs> 90s. Um, you could tell that this movie was definitely made for the ladies <laughs> because um, at every point, even when she was saying, you know, somewhere out there, there's an eight-year-old girl who wants to be a criminal. Mm -hmm. Let's do this for her. Um, it was... At every point, they were trying to make sure that you knew that this was a love letter 
but written in a different script, in a different format. And I, I really did enjoy that. I thought that it was I thought it was nice to not have to worry about is a man gonna come in and save the day for right. them all? Is it you know, is it going to be uh where all of a sudden some random dude just pops up? I was waiting for Danny to show up. Let's be honest. Yes. And I'm glad he didn't. They just they have the one scene they had his picture on her desk where you kind of saw it in the background just to let you know, like, and they kind of alluded to him. So just, okay, like I said, it's going to be spoiler. So do you think Danny's actually dead? No. And uh, my wife, Nisha, and I were talking about it uh, after the movie, and she's pretty convinced that they're going to have a, a sequel to this, mm -hmm. and Danny's going to show up, and it's going to be called Ocean's Nine. Absolutely. I don't think he's dead at all either. And uh, but I like how they brought a couple people back from the original movies, but it was none of the it wasn't Brad Pitt or Matt Damon or George Clooney. So it wouldn't try to like overshadow the women. So let mm -hmm. them have their own shine. And the people that they brought back kind of fit in where they needed to fit in. Um, also, this was a really good cast. I enjoyed the balance of the cast. Sandra Bullock was a she was the main character. She played Debbie Ocean, Danny Ocean's sister, who was in prison for five years because she got framed by her husband i believe it was her husband uh kate blanchett was in there as like her best friend she was like brad pitt to george clooney in the original mm -hmm. films uh then you had anne hathaway who played daphne kluger who i thought she was great in this film uh playing the character that she played mindy kaling was in there uh rihanna was in there aquafina Woo! first of all rihanna was seeing this black <laughs> woman playing a hacker and then She's in first of all the whole movie. She's like just chilling, smoking weed, and like these regular clothes. And then at the end of the movie, they put her in the fuck in the Met Gala dress, and I was like, mm. "Oh my god! Whew. Oh my god!" I I yelped. I couldn't help it when she came out in that dress. Oh, oh my god! Like oh, like everybody else. Let's put it like this. <laughs> That scene at the Met where they showed them all, because they took time to show all the ladies in their dresses and everything, leaving out um, after the heist. Um, everybody else looked like they were going to, like, Catholic church for, like, a <laughs> communion or something. No, Well, except, and Rihanna except came Debbie. out looking like she was going to the Met. And it was like, oh, my gosh, she looks so wonderful. And the oh. crazy thing about it is everybody else's dresses had create mad designs on it or bling or sparkles or all types of stuff. Rihanna just had on a red dress, but mm. she looked better than everybody else up there. And she looked she more She was efficient. like, let me show y'all how to really do this. She sounded like Jay-Z. I'm going to show you how to do this, Son. young. <laughs> yes. She was so good. And she was a hacker. Like most of the times you don't, first of all, most of the times you don't get a woman as the hacker in the film. And you definitely mm. don't get the black woman. And then if, when you do get the black woman, like in the Fast films, it's usually like the nerdy black woman. She was like Rihanna playing herself as a hacker. It, mm -hmm. And it was really, really good. And she was like integral to the whole plot. So like they have this elaborate heist to steal these really expensive diamonds that Cartier owns. Uh, and, they, and Debbie's been cooking up this plot while she was in prison the whole time. And so she's, she comes out and she basically has everything planned out. We got to get this person, get that person. We're going to do this, do that. And uh, unlike the original Ocean films where and some people think this is a negative, I didn't think it was a negative per se, but like in the original Ocean films in each one, there was like this big thing that like popped up that kind of messed up the plot. So it didn't run smoothly. But for the most part, this one ran pretty smoothly from start to finish. And a few times that there were little hiccups, uh, Rihanna's character basically just came in it was nine ball was her name and she just came in and was just like oh oh you need uh you need somebody to get this magnet oh i know somebody i know a girl i know a girl she's basically like the dude that you know the girl that you know that all that knows everybody who can do anything you need a mm -hmm. haircut you need some perfume you need dvds you, like she knew everybody and she got the people to come through to kind of help fix the little snags in the film i just i i just really enjoyed how uh, when uh, Debbie was like, what's your name? And she was like, 8-Ball. And she was like, do you have a real name? And she was like, 8-Ball. And <laughs> like, it was just like, you're not going to cow me. You're not going to talk down to me. I know what I'm good at. I know which issues y'all have. And if you really think about it in that aspect, Rihanna was the MVP of the movie. Absolutely. Like, 
her character, the way that she carried herself in that movie was like, I'm going to be the one to put this all together for you. I'm going to be the one to point out the uh, part that could be a trap spot here in the integral area of where the heist was going to happen at. I'm going to be the person who's going to discover how to work around that to help you out. I'm going to be the person to find the person who can help you out with this issue that suddenly popped up out of nowhere. Um, I just, I just wanted to shake her hand and just say, you know what? I, I, I'm grateful. And they never like, they should have given her a bigger cut period. Cause without yes. her, yes. none of this happens. Absolutely. She was the driving force. And, and the one thing I think they did good with the writing is parts of the film. You're wondering like, okay, what is this character up to? Like Anne Hathaway's character, you think she's just the mark the whole time, but then it turns around the end and she's like, she's not a mark. She's been picking up on shit the whole time. A uh, little clues, but she's been kind of playing along with it to get to the end so she can get her cut. And then, like, uh, Mindy Kaling's character, she's really, like, just there for the majority of the movie. And then at mm-hmm. the end of the movie, you're like, oh, oh, so you're going to just uh, take this big-ass necklace and turn it into individual pieces in the bathroom? And that's how you're going to get away? Okay, I see why you're here. And so, like, they kind of give everybody their own little shine at different parts, even if, when other parts of the film you're not sure uh, what's actually going on. Um, See, and yeah. I, I actually felt differently. I felt like that was the one big issue that I had with this movie and that they didn't give everybody shine. And, and, and again, I'm looking at it from the standpoint of what these same writers were able to do with Ocean's 11, 12, and 13. Uh, they took those two, uh, the two brothers, and had them off in Mexico in Ocean's 13 fighting a revolution. That's true. These two bit characters, they had them with full fleshed situations going on. They had everybody with a part. You never wonder what was going on. I saw Aquafina in this movie maybe twice. Once when she was when they were when they introduced everybody, everybody got their their time to shine, sure, but after they introduced her, I didn't really see her again until the bathroom scene. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, it was like they they the movie, maybe it was because of the length of the movie, they had to squeeze some things out, but everybody didn't get a chance to uh, show off their chops the way that everybody was able to show off in the Ocean series. Um, the other issue that I had with the movie, and and they're, they're minute, this is a really good movie, y'all. Mm-hmm. Check it out. This is a good movie in the way that Star Wars... Uh, Solo was a good movie. Exactly. I was going to say the same thing. I was going to say the same exact thing. It's not going to change your world, Mm -hmm. but it's not going to destroy your world either. It's a fun little jaunt. That's all it is. Um, The other issue that I had with the movie was the fact that when we went to the theater to see it, our theater has like, it's it's one of those, uh, it just got remodeled. So instead of, uh, just having to look at the uh, the ticket to see what theater you're in, they have the movie poster digitally on the wall. Oh, um, at the at the at the door of the theater you're supposed to go into, and it's really dope. It helps out. But as I was walking into the theater after I got my popcorn and everything, um, I noticed that uh, Daphne Kluger was on the poster. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Anne Hathaway is on the poster. And I'm looking, and I'm like, okay, these other seven people. And as the movie starts, you're counting. You're like, okay, there's only seven people here. But it's called Ocean's 8. And I know on Ocean's 11 and 12 and 13, it was because they were adding more and more people. So who's the eighth person? You look at that poster, and you see the only other person out there is Anne Hathaway. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay. I know exactly at some point she's going to jump in and she's mm-hmm. going to be a part of this. And the way that they tried to fit her in as, okay, she was always in on it. I'm glad that they didn't say that she was always in on it. Right. Because that would have made that whole first part just moot. Like, okay, this makes no sense whatsoever. Um, so the fact that they made that their big reveal, you know how all the Ocean's movies have those, oh my gosh, type moments. Mm-hmm. Um I, the fact that they made that their big reveal, I'm glad they didn't try and like work it like, oh, she was in on it the whole time and y'all were just getting played because that would have made me feel like, okay, now I'm no longer a part of this movie. Right. They were wise to not do that. They respected the audience to an extent. They knew that because it was no way she was in it from the beginning. And there's no way. <laughs> so they made a point 
in the reveal by saying, "Oh, I I didn't know anything until this," and then and it was and it was like, "Yeah, that makes sense." Like the uh, Bonham Carter's character Rose, the fashion designer, was like snapping a picture, and she kind of turned her head and saw it. And I was like, "Yeah, if I if I saw someone like filming me secretly, I'd start to think something was weird then too." So like, but that was well after the film started and well after the whole um, heist. And their whole plan was going. So they, they kind of respected the audience to a stink to allow us the satisfaction of knowing that she didn't know the whole time, but she kind of picked it up. But then they had another reveal, which, you know, the Ocean's films always do this, where it's like you got the main heist and then you find out that, oh, yeah, but they secretly did this and they got all these other gems and uh, jewelry so that everybody got more money than what they were expecting. Yeah. And I was like, at that point, I was like, oh, okay. And and so I didn't know, so I didn't know exactly what was going to happen, but I knew there was more to it. Uh, so you were just kind of waiting for like what was going to mm-hmm. drop at the end of the film. Uh, but that doesn't take away from the film at all. Um, no, not no. in the slightest. Um, so who was your uh, standout performer in this film? You know, uh, like I said, Rihanna was wonderful. She was absolutely resplendent in this movie um, on so many different levels. Um, but I really did like Helena Bonham Carter. I, I like Rose. I thought that she played like just like the person who was new to this. Like everybody else is already a, a polished criminal. So for her to play like, OK, I'm, I'm just kind of getting my feet wet when they were like, don't look left, don't look right do this and she was like almost messing it up and stuttering over it. I think Helena played a person who was over their head, uh, but then learned how to swim pretty quickly, really well. Um, And I think that her parts of this movie um, were so integral to the entirety of the movie. Like if she didn't sell her parts, the rest of the movie wouldn't have, wouldn't have came together. Right. So I think that she was the unsung hero of this movie. But I always got to say Rihanna, too, because Rihanna was fucking amazing and just looked like a million, trillion, billion bucks. Um, And they gave her silky dreads. Hmm? And they gave her the silky dreads. Right. Right. (laughs) So, yeah. I was just like, yo. I was like, yo. So, was she adopted? Because the person who came out to help with the magnet was her sister. (laughs) Yeah. But but her sister came up to like her chest and they're both grown, but her sister is like hella short and Rihanna's like <laughs> hella towering over her. And I'm like, is this twins? Is this like Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger were? Like, did they get adopted? Is there a backstory to this? I need an Ocean's 8 spinoff <laughs> featuring Nine Ball. That's what I need. All right, I'm all, I'm I'm for it. I'm all for that. Uh, yeah, Rihanna stood out to me. I also really enjoyed Anne Hathaway's character because it was kind of like this meta character because she was basically playing an actress who was kind of like a uh, like a diva actress, per se, I guess. And she mm-hmm. was like all about like how what the people think of her and what the what the press is saying, and she wants to have the best of this. And she had she had like a, a feud with this other woman, and so they set her up to think that Rose was going to dress for her. And then she came in and drooped in. And I think it's kind of like this meta thing because like, there's a lot of people who don't like Anne Hathaway and I like Anne Hathaway. So I think she was kind of in the movie. It was kind of, it was similar to like, was it Ocean's 12 where, um, Julia Roberts yeah, played Julia, Julia Roberts. Roberts. Yeah. Yeah. She pretended to be Julia Roberts. So, and that one, did, I don't think they pulled that one off as good as this, uh, that part of the film, I should say. As good as this, uh, she did this, and she it wasn't it wasn't heavy handed, and nothing in this film was heavy handed. So this was clearly a film that was meant to say that like you know, women obviously can do this just as well, if not better than the men. Uh, but it wasn't. It didn't. I don't think it's going to turn off. You know, like I don't really care about these people, but I don't think it's going to turn off like the anti feminist. I hate this stuff, people, because they just did it in a way to where it's just like. Yeah, we're going to do this and we're going to get this done and we're going to take our money and then we're going to leave. And it, it kind of just went smoothly from start to finish in a way that uh, the other films didn't, but kind of in its own like special little way. Um, is there anything else in this film that you didn't like? Um, you know, it, it, it's... Something that couldn't have been recreated anyway, but I really wish that Lou and Debbie's relationship, Kate Blanchett and 
and uh, Sandra Bullock. I really wish their relationship was more cohesive. Like I, I've been, like I said, I was spoiled from seeing the Oceans trilogy, and so the relationship between Brad Pitt and George Clooney is just like they're finishing each other's sentences. Right. You know, they're talking about what plays they're going to put on people, but they didn't have that in this movie, which is in, 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 in the whole, it's fine because that's them building their own synergy. It's just the myself selfishly. I thought that that would have been beautiful, but also would have been non, I wouldn't have been able to really believe that they have that sort of relationship. So no, I thought that it was pretty wonderful. Um, to double back to what you were saying about how you didn't think the non-feminists would have an, a real issue with this movie. Ha, 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 ha. Um, I mean, well, they still are. We know how they responded to Ghostbusters. That's exactly what they're saying. Yes. <laughs> that's exactly what they're saying. Mm-hmm. Um, they are saying that this movie, the issue that they have with this movie is that it should have been men. That's a direct quote. Like, um, this should have been men. Could you convince me that this would have been a problem if they had rehashed it with the all-male cast? Yes, most definitely. Why does it need to be men, first of all? Second of all, this film was very, to me, very directly women. Like, the whole plot of the film, like, the whole meta part of this film is that women would probably, if if this were real, Women would probably be far better big ticket, like big money thieves than men because mm-hmm. nobody gives a shit about, nobody pays attention to women in that way. And so they can just kind of maneuver through their situations normally and people would never even think to think these things of them, even though they're fully capable of those things. I also think uh, it's interesting because one of the things that I heard that I knew was definitely like some sexism is that people are like, it's, it's really hard to it's really hard for the protagonist to be the criminals in the film. Like they seem so like wanting to steal this thing. Cause you know, I heard somebody say, like in the in the Oceans movies, the original trilogy, there was always like a, a, an antagonist and villain. So it was Andy Garcia, then it was Al Pacino. Like there was this guy who is clearly the bad guy who they're trying to like get over on, right? But in this film, there really is no antagonist like figure like you think that it's you think that is Anne Hathaway's character when you first start the movie like in the first 15 minutes but it's she's really not the like the like the 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 obstacle in this film is really just like trying to get this necklace there's not really a person that they're trying to go after so I've heard people say like it's really hard to get behind these people because there's no antagonist in the film and I'm like <laughs> Like, there's nothing behind that except sexism because it's the same exact thing for the other movies. I don't give a mm-hmm. fuck if it wasn't an, an actual antagonist. These women were still the protagonists, even though they were criminals. Like, there's no doubt the way this film was written or portrayed that these women were the protagonists. So that's just kind of some bullshit stuff that you might have heard about this film, and, and it's not true. And the thought that you need to have a, a, a antagonist in order to pull off the heist of the century... How often do you hear that? <laughs> no. Yeah, man, I'm going to break into Fort Knox because my cousin works there yeah. and reneged in the spades game three years ago. Nah, nigga, I'm going to rob Fort Knox because it's there. That's why people climb Mount Everest because it's there. Exactly. They don't climb because their homeboy said they couldn't. It's there. So, nah, I don't need a pro. I don't need an antagonist. I just need to see how they're going to put this together and how they're going to pull it off. And, I wanted to see perfection because, uh, to quote uh, Debbie, she had at she had five plus years right to plan this one out. So I want to see how that's going to work. Like literally, the 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 beauty of this is there was no well, they did try and work one in. You know, they they did. Oh yeah, Brian in. Carter, Mr. Randall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but by and large, it was just I've been sitting in jail thinking about this for five years, yo. Like, as soon as I get out of jail, let's put together a crew. Let's pull this off. Let's go. Yeah. At the end of the movie, they bring in, like, this insurance person who's trying to figure out, like, you know, where is it? I just, I, he's basically like, I don't care who goes to jail. I just need to get this necklace back because I need this money. So, like, I don't care what you got to do to get me this necklace back. Just get me this necklace back. 
Uh, so when he first comes in, you can you might think that oh he's going to be the person that tries to take these people down, but they kind of flip it up on you. And it was like he had really good chemistry with Sandra Bullock, and they come and talk to each other, and they basically set up Sandra's ex who uh, set her up in the first place. So mm -hmm. uh, it was definitely a well told story it's from start to finish. It's not the greatest movie ever, but it doesn't need to be the greatest movie ever. It's a very enjoyable film that everyone should go see. It is worth your 12 bucks or your 15 bucks or wherever you live, however much it costs to go to the movies. And DC is 15 bucks. It's worth it to go see this film uh, on a Friday or Saturday night or even a matinee picture. But just go see it. It's a good film. Uh, mm -hmm. Anything else you got about this before we get out of here? I'm just telling y'all, just prepare yourself. Rihanna is amazing, oh. and Kate Blanchett is amazing. And the only thing I, 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 the only issue I had with Kate Blanchett was I was like, she gonna fight? I was, I was really just waiting for her to, you know, just pull her hair back and just have them <laughs> horns and just mm -hmm. murk somebody. Mm -hmm. But other than that, uh, amazing. Um, the movie is great. It is. It's it's a really fun movie. Like y'all are gonna enjoy it. It's it's let's if, if nothing else, let's call it an an amuse bouche for the summer movie mm -hmm. season. Um, this is akin to Ant Man in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yes. Um, Ant Man the Wasp is coming out. We're gonna go see that. It's not going to be. You're not gonna try and compare that against the rest of these movies. And if you do, you're doing yourself a disservice. Yes. Don't. Yeah try and compare this movie to the other Oceans movies. Compare this movie to movies you've seen recently. Yes. And you'll say that this was a good movie. Just, And there's I mean, been a couple it. of these recently. So, like, um, we'll, we're going to do a review for Hotel Artemis, but that was, I saw that early. That was good. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Upgrade was good. Oh. I enjoyed Upgrade a lot. Uh <laughs> Um, and that and these movies are not the big blockbuster films. These are not hundred and fifty million dollar budget films. These are films that were put out in the summertime for you to go see with your family or your friends or your or your spouse, and they're enjoyable, quick, enjoyable, fun, well acted films. Uh, out of a score out of one to ten, where do you get this film? I will give it a solid eight. Um. I, I would give it higher, but honestly, um, like I said, I didn't feel like they gave people enough time to spread their wings. Um, but overall, the movie was wonderful, and the way that they incorporated everybody into the moments of truth were well done. Yeah, that's exactly the same score I had. It's just, it's a solid 8 out of 10. Go see the film. You will enjoy it. I can't possibly see how you will walk out of this film there's nobody who should walk out, unless you're just a sexist, like, MRA type dude, you're not going to walk out this film upset. At worst, you're going to be like, oh, it was like the other Ocean's films. And most people would be like, I really enjoyed this film. This was an excellent two hours out of my night to go see this film. So it's definitely a solid eight, very enjoyable. Uh, you should go to see this film. But thank you guys for listening. Remember, check out Rashani on the single simulcast and all his other podcasts that he talked about in the beginning. You can find those on iTunes, uh, Lipson, Go Listen. It's a great show. Uh, you can find us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify. Uh, leave us a five-star review. It helps us out a lot. And we will be back uh, soon with the next show. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Talk to you later. Stick to the game, homie, I follow the codes Keep this money hungry